Not so fast. You know what time it is. Sit. Balance is important. Come on, Emily. No one sits together for breakfast anymore. Breakfast, 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 settle, breakfast, down, breakfast. settle down. It's almost ready. You guys know I wouldn't leave you hanging. Yeah. So, when's the last time either one of you had a date? It was a disaster, you guys. Total embarrassment. I have a very strong personality that not every guy can handle. Oh. I think you have a very nice personality. <laughs> Ever since we were kids. Aw, if only I could find someone like you. Really guys, I'm fine. I am perfectly happy helping everybody at the hospital all the time. Yes, exactly. Except there's um this one guy though. Hmm, do you tell? What if I end up dying alone? This is my first grade heartbreak all over again. You guys remember? Relax, man. Just, just be breezy. Ladies dig a mellow man. You do know who you're talking to, right? So? Is he handsome? Come on, guys. It's not like that. I just mean that I really think he has potential to help make a difference. Okay, there's also that too. <laughs> <laughs> She's relentless. It's like she doesn't know that City Hall is where good ideas go to die. So you like her? I mean, it's not all bad. You know. You can have it all. Successful careers and successful relationships. I don't know. I've always been skeptical of the whole love of your life thing. Do you guys think there's someone out there for everyone? Oh, well, there is. I don't think I met her yet. Who says there have to be just one? Hey, hey! So how are things going between you and that community organizer? Uh, I've been trying to shake her, but she's pretty persistent. Excuse me, guys. I need to talk to you about the community project, and you haven't responded to any of my inquiries. Whoa! I hope that was refreshing. You know what else would be refreshing? If you were willing to at least hear me out. Oh. Based on my understanding of City Hall social etiquette, I'll wait out in front and let you finish. But remember, we still need to talk. And don't forget to wash your hands. It's very important. You seem pretty relaxed for someone who has been hounded by a community organizer for the past few weeks. That's because I rerouted her to the community relations department. Oh, the dreaded bureaucracy strikes again. Well, it may seem harsh, but it's better that she learned the hard way. And now, I'm on to my job of justifying my job. I think I can help you with that. Wow, um, she's good. Yeah, I'm starting to see that now. Okay, uh, well, uh, good luck with that. I know what you were trying to do there, but I know a few things about how the system works myself. Well, then you would know that there's very little that I can do for you. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think you could help. I don't know why you're being so persistent. Besides, I'm just an administrator. I'm at the bottom of the food chain. 
I know who I'm talking to, and I believe that I've come to the right place. Look, I know what you tried to do in the past didn't work, but I really think that if we work together, we can help make a difference. Is that so? It is. And if you would seriously just listen to me and consider my proposal, you would see that. Okay, what do you have? Quite a bit, actually. But I think showing you would help you understand better. And if you're still not on board by the end of the day, I promise to leave you alone. You have yourself a deal. Oh, great. <laughs> Let's get started. Well, aren't we fancy now? Looks like before we know it, college extraordinaire Alex Olenek could be leaving us behind for the big time. Relax, just my first day. You're still stuck with me for another four years until I replace you with all my fancy new college friends. So? How'd it go? Well, I didn't get kicked out, so there's that. Yeah, that could have gone either way. But see, you're already growing. I trust you didn't get into any fights. Come on, Danny, it's like you said. I'm high society now. We bottle up all that latent aggression and let it out at the worst possible time. Thanksgiving at your house this year will be pretty interesting. <laughs> Trust me, that statement is more true than you want to know. And believe me when I say, you don't want to know. So what are you studying? Chemistry. I can think of a few practical uses for that subject. I'm sure you can. Do you think I'm smart enough to get into Bradley? You know, if I applied myself and all that? Of course you can. Underneath that perfectly styled hair of yours is a brain big enough to get into Bradley. I happen to think you're very smart. Just not smarter than me. Uh, what are we doing in the newsroom for the local paper? If I can prove to you that the media is on our side, it'll show you that this issue can resonate with the public at large. Plus, it also helps that I was raised in the same house as one of their top reporters. Hey there, Susan. What brings you in today? Have I got just the story for you. By the way, this is Greg. He works at City Hall. So, what's the scoop? C Corp is out of control. They're tearing down historical buildings, threatening local businesses, and forcing families out of their home all in favor of capital interest done a good job of covering their checks so far, but if anyone can expose them, it's Erica and Tom, Ace reporters. Well, I appreciate you billing me first in your pitch. You sure know how to sell a story. Even if it were a problem, what could we do about it? Shine a light on it. Sunlight is the best disinfectant, as they say. I don't know, Susan. We try not to take sides on political issues. But this is more than just a political issue. This is about the people. I'm interested, and I think we can help. We just need to know more about the issue before we can get involved. I'll let you two catch up while I talk to the reasonable one. So, you're dating my sister? Nah, I'm just here on city business. So, uh, are you and Erica dating? No, we're. Oh, I see. I'm actually really impressed with Susan's argument. We should definitely look into this, Tom. You know, since it seems like we're all working towards the same goal, me and my roommates, we're going to an art gallery tonight. Uh, you guys should come. Yeah, yeah sounds fun. Nice. What's a darling in the environmental movement? She has become a quite the polarizing figure in recent weeks, much like her parents. Coming up, we've got Emily Taylor. Tune in. This is Joyce Lipsky with Channel 5 News. This is Joyce Lipsky with the Channel 5 News. I'm here with someone you might recognize, environmental activist Emily Taylor. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. From my understanding, your group is about to protest C Corp, building a pipeline here in just a few hours. But what message are you trying to send? Uh, well, we're just trying to bring people together and hopefully we can demonstrate that protecting the environment benefits everybody. Reports say that you've been talking to C Corp about working with them in an executive capacity. C Corp is said to be one of the biggest polluters in the country, according to a study conducted by your group. 
why would you want to work for a company considered by most activists to be the enemy? Well, I don't really see anybody as an enemy. <laughs> I mean, I think that anybody can be an ally if properly motivated. Um, we're really just trying to demonstrate that protecting the environment is in all of our best interests. So it's true. Yes, uh, I have been talking to C-Corp. Um, in my experience, uh, I have learned that um, there is more than one way to make a difference. By experience, you mean that? I just mean that my experience in general. Mm -hmm. the critics say that you've been following in your famous parents' footsteps by selling out. How would you respond to those accusations? Uh, I just have to say that I love my parents very much um, and I truly believe them to be very good people who have done a lot of positive things for the movement and I just ask that I be judged on my own merits and I can assure you that I only care about protecting the environment. Well there you have it. It looks like Emily Taylor has a lot of big things coming up. With the Channel 5 News, I'm Joyce Lipsky. Back to you, Sergey. Hey, uh, sorry, the questioning was a little rough. Uh, people want to know what you're up to. So. Oh, yeah, no, I understand. Um, you're just doing your job, and you're doing a good job. Thank you. Oh. Hello? Really? Oh, yeah, that would be great. I'll be right there. Ross, are you okay? Uh, I mean, I'm in here. What happened? They were pushing me, embarrassing me, and Uncle Ethan told me to defend myself, so I did. Okay, all right. Mom's gonna take care of you, all right? I got your back. Okay. Yeah. Ah, Miss Johnson, good. Uh, Miss Karen. Karen, uh, Ben. Now, I trust you understand why Ross is here today. Yes. Ross, I'm told you hit someone today. Did you tell him why? They were calling me names because my dad's never around. <sighs> okay. Um, I was not made aware that that was going on. Now I want you to understand that we don't tolerate bullying of any kind. Uh, my son was bullied. My son is not a bully. Right. Now, Ross, I want you to know that we're going to take steps to make sure this doesn't happen again. Yes, you are. But if it does, I don't want you to fight back, okay? I want you to come find me and I'll help you. Okay. Okay. I want you to go outside and wait in the hall for me, all right? Detention's over for you. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, 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 I'll be right there. I, uh, I didn't know about Ross's dad. Yeah, well, there's a lot of big, mean kids in this school. Will you look after my son? I will. Hello there, Samantha. Mark. Where is my patient? She was uninsured, so I went ahead and cut her loose. Thank you. I'll take it from here. Hi, I'm Dr. Brown. I heard you had quite the fall recently. How would you rate your pain level on a scale of 1 to 10? I feel like it's killing me. Let's hope not. I must admit, I'm having a hard time identifying the root cause of the issue. Listen, you don't have to go out of your way like this for me. What do you mean? I understand how these things work. I know the drill. I don't think you do. Just because we haven't been able to identify what's going on with you yet, doesn't mean I'm not going to keep trying. And personally, I am not going anywhere until we figure out a way to help you. 
And don't worry about your bill. I have it covered. Well, this is new. I'm hoping that by the time we're done here, it won't be. Now, before I finish, I want everyone to know that if we really want to improve our schools, clean up our neighborhoods, and ultimately change how things work, we have to work together to put up a united front against the big money special interest groups. Now who's with me? So, what'd you guys think? That was really great. <laughs> we gotta go, but you're gonna be great. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you later. Bye. Like your speech. Thank you. I do what I can. So, what do you think City Hall is willing to do to help? Yeah, uh, about that. I really do think we work pretty well together as a team, but uh, that's a lost cause. Uh, why don't we work on something smaller, like a recycling initiative or something? First of all, I don't think this is a lost cause or I wouldn't be here. Second of all, we're asking for a hell of a lot more than a couple recycling bins. I understand, but that's the best I can do. <laughs> I must be slipping because I thought I saw something special in you. I was warned about lost causes before I started this project, but it seems like the only lost cause here is you. Uh, I see. I suppose this is a bad time to ask out on a date. Goodbye, Greg. Let the record show that the majority of the board here at C-Corp does not agree with this hiring. It is our opinion that you are completely in over your head and grossly underqualified. However, your parents' opinions are of great value to us here, and their insistence that you be hired here has left us no choice but to put you in an executive position. Wow, you know my parents? That's great! What a small world. Well, next time I see them, I'll let them know that you said hi. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I will not let you down. Hey, thank you for staying with me. I can't remember the last time someone actually tried to treat me and not just rush me out because I wasn't insured. Well, thank you for being such a cooperative patient. They never should have released you in the first place. So what's next for the spirited Dr. Brown? I'm going to make sure this never happens again. What are we doing here? My patient almost died today due to being released because of a lack of insurance. I want to ensure that doesn't happen again. What do you propose? That we treat everyone, regardless of whether they can pay or not. You can't possibly be serious. Even your family doesn't have that kind of money. Actually, they do. But I need your approval to get started. I want you to see the humanity of these people, and not just view them as a burden. We can't save everyone, but we need to at least make sure we've tried to help them as best we can, just like we would our own family. It used to be that way, but not anymore. I would like to bring that back. So who's with me? We are in the business of selling medical services, not giving them away for free. We are most definitely not with you. You will be. All right, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah. Isn't this supposed to be the environmental division? <laughs> I mean, why aren't we talking more about ways in which we can save the environment? Because the only thing that I keep hearing is ways in which we can avoid liability or put a positive spin on all of these man-made disasters. Eh. Hmm. Hi, how are you? My name is Emily. Hi. 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 Are you sure about this? Place is locked up tighter than four. Ah, uh, of course I'm sure. We have to find a way to get access to C Corp's records, and you should know by now that something as pedestrian as massive security roadblocks won't stop me. Oh, you 
would not believe the day I've had. My one o'clock got pushed to two. My two o'clock showed up 15 minutes early. Tell my 4.30 to come tomorrow at nine. Oh, this is a scheduling nightmare. Do try to keep up, Johnson. Oh, sorry, Mr. Ince. Certainly, Mr. Ince. You're a very important person. People are eager to speak with you. ID, please. This is ridiculous. Don't you recognize me? Sorry, ma'am. I can't say that I do. Exactly how long have you been working here? You should really take better care in putting faces to the names of your superiors. Annalise Durrance? This is outrageous! People implore daily to meet with me, and our own security guards can't even recognize who's a threat to the system and who's a centerpiece. <laughs> a disgrace! I'm sorry, Miss Durrance. I didn't know. It's only my second week here. Uh, it won't happen again. I should hope not. How did you pull that off? Reporter trick number one, confidence. Stick with me and you might learn a thing or two. Listen, I, I just, just want, want to apologize. apologize. I know I'm apologizing. Why are you apologizing? I should have been more understanding as to why you didn't immediately jump at the chance to help. Sometimes I get so caught up in the cause, I forget how my actions affect those trying to help us. Well, I'm glad you did. I mean, working with you reminded me of why I got back into politics to begin with. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, maybe we can work on something together in the near future. How about now? <laughs> you don't have to help me just because you like me. Uh, it's not just that. I mean, I'm a little skeptical about how this whole thing can work, but I'm willing to give it a try. Wow. How progressive of you. And if I can get a date out of the whole thing, all the better. All right, I'll take it. Looks like we both might get what we want by the end of this. Thank you for meeting me here today. Um, I would like to be transferred to a different division that actually cares about protecting the environment. I really feel like that my skills would be better utilized there. This is an outrage. You can't just walk in here on the first day and I see. Your request has been accepted, and we got just a place in mind for you, too. Trust me? Of course. Hey. I don't recognize you. Yeah, I'm... You're not supposed Mr. Greeley, no, no. Hey, I've been looking for this guy. I'll take it from here. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Do I know you? Marsha. From the Christmas party, we have... You know? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a... That was a wild night. Tell me about it. Uh, thanks for catching this guy for me. He's a corporate spy trying to steal our secrets. And you know what we do with spies. Oh, dude, you are in so much trouble. Say, maybe I'll see you again soon and we can pick up where we left off. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. <laughs> Reporter trick number two, sleight of hand. Looks like you've got the keys to Fort Knox. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Do what exactly? Try and fight the demolition process. You remember what happened last time. You can't fight this. Looks like we have a difference of opinion here. We have more than that. Seems like things are moving along further than you think. Guess you really can't fight City Hall. Susan, we're saving that building. Hey, Danny. And... Greg and Ben, it's so good to see you guys here, and not just Danny, like I thought. It's great to see you too, Alex. 
Looks like you're not the only one living in high society now. Hey Tom, it's great you can make it. Hey Greg. It's great to see you, Susan. It's good to see you, Greg. Hi, everyone. Um, these are my best friends, Samantha and Emily. Lovely to make your acquaintance. Well, I'm Greg. This is Finn. Good friend, Alex. And uh, this flirtatious young man over here is Danny. I'm sorry, I can't just turn it off. <laughs> I thought you said you needed a ride. You're not here, are you? Fiona, I am fine. I don't need a night off to relax. Besides, you know, I don't like leaving Ross at home alone. Like, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that you're there with him, but that's not really what we're talking about right now, is it? Five minutes, and then I'm leaving. Karen? <laughs> I didn't expect to see you here. Me neither. <laughs> I was just leaving. Oh, well, uh, if you've got a minute, I'd love to introduce you to my friends before you go. Sure. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Karen, a parent at the school. Hi, nice to meet you. Karen, this is Greg and Danny, and our new friend Tom, Tom's sister Susan, her two best friends, Emily and Samantha, and, oh, this is Alex. Ladies, I think I see a Moza. Okay, so this one is from when he won first prize at the science fair. Ah. Look at his suit. Uh, and this one is from his 10th birthday party. It was Star Trek. <laughs> Aww, he seems like such a great kid. Oh, he is. I don't know how, but he is just the best. Yeah, it's not always easy. Yeah. But yeah, having a kid is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Aww. I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm going on about my kid too much. I'm just so proud of him. Well, yeah, we understand. And we're having a great time getting to know you. Likewise. <laughs> so, that Ben guy, is it serious? Oh, no, no, we're not involved. We actually just met today. Mm. He seems nice though. See, Emily, I'm not the only one who doesn't have time to date. I haven't even thought about dating anyone since Ross's dad. Do you have kids too? No, I'm just very dedicated to my job. <laughs> <laughs> Some would say a little too dedicated. Mm, well, that sounds great. What do you do? Uh, I'm a doctor and Emily here is an environmental activist. Wait a minute, I have seen you on the TV. You're Emily Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I am? <laughs> oh, I think it's so great what you're doing. Oh. We all have to do our part to make the world a better place for our kids to live in. Yes, absolutely, right? yes. Yeah. And a doctor? Wow. <laughs> you two must be pretty loaded. You could say that. <laughs> so what do you do? Oh, um, I'm just a waitress at a diner. Well, your job is just as important as ours. Everyone needs food to survive. It's an essential service. And I bet you have a lot of interesting stories. <laughs> yeah, interesting is definitely one word for it. You would not believe some of the people that walk through that door. So he thought he could get away with it because he's some sort of big time corporate bigwig. So what did you do? I mean, did you tell your boss? I didn't have to. He tried it again, so I twisted his arm and made him apologize and kicked him out myself. Teach him to get fresh with me. Well, that is one way to deal with the batter. Hey. <laughs> if you ask me, she let him off easy. If it were up to me, I'd have broken both his arms. Hey, I will keep that in mind if he ever <laughs> dares to show his face around there again.
And that is when the whole neighborhood started brawling. <laughs> so all this happened because they wouldn't leave your little sister alone. Debbie is a good kid, right? Smart, mature, confident. She's going places. Getting involved with a gang would have just ruined her life. Well, so I take it you won the fight. Of course. The trick is to go for the hair. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm some sort of hothead who just goes around like beating people up. I'm just very protective of my family. Oh no, I can definitely relate uh, to the being protective part. Uh, generally speaking, I try to avoid fights. Oh, if only it works that way where I come from. Generally speaking, we don't really uh, talk about our feelings as a form of conflict resolution. Oh, I'm not judging. I, um... <laughs> I think it's quite admirable, the lengths you're willing to go to be there for your family. Um, yeah, uh, long story short, uh, I decided that, you know, going to college and like living the party girl lifestyle wasn't really for me. Um, my siblings still needed me and uh, just having Ross just sort of confirmed that I made the right choice. <sighs> I, uh, I've never met someone like you. And I, I think it would be great if we could see each other again. This is exciting. All kinds of new people to meet. It doesn't look like too many turned out tonight. Oh, just think of the possibilities and all the meaningful connections and maybe even a little romance. Subtle. Ooh, how about that handsome man over there in the beard? I don't know, he kind of looks like your type. <laughs> oh, how about that guy that we met earlier? Um, Danny? He's nice. I I'm pretty sure that girl over there, I think her name is Alex. She seems super into him. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Too bad he can't. Okay. Um, oh, how about, how about we just enjoy our evening? because you need to enjoy your life outside of a hospital. I do, with you and Susan. No, you know what I mean. Brugada syndrome. That's what my patient would have died of if I hadn't literally run out of the hospital and brought her back in for treatment. She seemed fine to everyone else, but I knew she wasn't. I was the only one. She was moments away from sudden heart failure. There just, there aren't enough doctors like me, and the ones that are have their hands tied with red tape forcing them to maximize hospital profit over patients' experiences. But until things change, I have to be there for them when no one else will. You know, you're really good at speeches. Maybe you should run for office. <laughs> I believe that to my dear old dad. Look, ever since Martha, I just, I want to do everything I can to help people. I wish I knew where she was, but I mean, it's the least I can do. Besides, I'm only trying to save my patients. You're trying to save the whole world. <laughs> So, are you going to tell me what this is really all about? I just want you to be happy. <laughs> We're in our 30s now, and I just don't want you to look back at your life eventually and think that you didn't get enough. Like, you didn't meet enough people, or see enough of the world, or fall in love. I mean, you spend all of your free time with me, and I just don't want you to feel like you're wasting. This. What? Waste my time with you? Yeah. Is that really what you think? Come on, Em, you know me better than that. Well, no, I just, you look, know. Look, do you want to know what the best day of my life was? Okay, picture a little girl who's always in her study reading medical books, and her parents force her to go to a social gathering to talk to the other kids. Except, none of the other kids want to talk to her because she's the weirdo who only is interested in medical mysteries and how to solve them. They even make fun of her. Until another weird little girl comes in and she is the most beautiful, kind, and gentlest soul I've ever met. Everybody loves her, so they back off. It was right then I knew we would be best friends for life and we are just getting started. Are you sure? I am. I know what you've been through. Okay? I am not them. You're enough. You are more than enough. And when the time comes, no matter what happens, I'm not gonna be asking for some guy. I'm gonna be asking to see my Emily again. My life truly started when I met you, and yours is the last face I wanna see when I leave this world. 
Samantha. Look, I was wrong this morning when I said I was skeptical about the whole love of your life thing. Because I met mine a long time ago. Oh, I feel exactly the same. I just... Oh, I just freaking love you. <laughs> I love you too. Now go on, go socialize. I know you want to. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but thank you also for being sweet. And I will not push as hard, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try. It wouldn't be you if you did. <laughs> now go. Thanks. You look like you've got something weighing pretty heavily on your mind. Believe me, I know how that feels. Yeah, you could say that. Uh, where's Emily? Oh, she likes to say hello to everyone in the room, but don't worry, she'll be back around. She is very persuasive. <laughs> Apparently we have a lunch date tomorrow. <laughs> that sounds like her. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look, I'm not as good at this as Emily, but maybe I can help? Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's just that, like, me and him, like, we are just so different, you know. I come from a really poor neighborhood where I am barely making ends meet, you know, and he <laughs> is so straight-laced. It's just, like, I don't see why he would be into me. Well, I mean, how you're raised doesn't necessarily determine your worth as a person. I mean, I was raised with money, and trust me, it does not necessarily make for decent people. It's, it's good to remember not everything is always perfect on the other side. Yeah. Is it really just the socioeconomic differences between you and Ben? I, I haven't dated anyone since Ross's death. Um, and I just want Ross to have all of the opportunities that I never had. Like, I never finished high school because I was too busy taking care of my siblings. I don't want that for my son. Okay. You know, I, I just I feel like a bad mom for even entertaining the idea that I could date somebody while fully dedicating myself to my son and making sure that he has every single thing he needs. On second thought, maybe we should wait for Emily, but if you ever need free medical advice, I'm your girl. <laughs> I'm just, I'm gonna go get her. Yep. You know, I could just tell my film. Now what would be the fun in that? Besides, I have no idea what you're talking about. But if I did, I'd say it's not that easy. He's been my best friend since high school. We're in our late 20s now, so it's like, it's like, how would I even get started? It just feels like too much time has passed. Yeah, I always wonder why you never said anything in high school. It always seemed pretty obvious. You'd think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> Are you sure you'd want to if you could? I mean, I love Danny like a brother, but he's never been one for deep intellectual conversation. He actually has a lot more going on than most people think. People just underestimate his potential. Uh, kind of like how people underestimate you based on your background. I think I get it now. Doesn't matter anyway. He'll never ask me out. You can always just ask him out first. There's no way he'd say no. Okay, but if he did, I would never live it down. It... It has to come from him first. Ah, I see. Classic power dynamics. 
You want to have them on your own terms with no vulnerability or emotional investment involved on your part. Basically, something for nothing. Yeah, pretty much. Fair enough. Here's what you do. Ask him out when he's preoccupied. That way you can play it either way. Plausible deniability. I like it. You have to lock in and don't let the other girls throw you off. This means no fighting. Do I have a reputation of someone who's constantly getting into fights? Got it. Stay cool. I can do that. The key here is to stand out while also showing that you're interested. See what she's doing over there? Do that, but in your own Alex way. For some reason, he hasn't been picking up on your signals. It's probably because I have a bad habit of pulling back when he gets too close. Okay, well, don't do that. Or more specifically, don't do that until you've laid down the groundwork. It's important to be clear, but not obvious. Okay, that makes sense. Most of the girls Danny talks to try to go as far as they can right away. Stopping early throws off his usual pattern in a good way. Well, that's right on my alley. Giving Danny a hard time is like one of my favorite things to do. By the end of the night, you'll have him right where you want him, but then you stop. He'll be thinking of you nonstop. You don't have to do anything. He'll come to you. You really have a knack for understanding social dynamics and using them to manipulate people into behaving a certain way. It's kind of a prerequisite for getting into politics. You know, I think this is the longest we've ever talked since we met. It's like you're a different person. Yeah, I guess you can say I've been kind of inspired lately. I think she has a positive influence on you. Try not to screw it up. I'll do my best. I have to go, but remember, follow my advice to the letter. Trust me, it'll work. You just have to be patient. You know me, I've been waiting for the longest time. Hey, hey you didn't think I'd let you run off without at least saying goodbye. Sorry about that. I just, um, I'm having a hard time with what's happening tomorrow. So, uh, where are you going? to something that's really important to me before it's too late. I'd like to come with you if that's okay. I want to see where I'll be. I have so many great memories here. I did everything I could to try to save it, but C Corp just swooped right in and bought it right from under me. The South Side isn't as bad as people think. There is so much potential here. We could all just work together. But we have to take a stand right here, right now, because if we don't, then where will all the people go? Thank you for staying with me all night. I imagine you had something else in mind. Being with you is what I had in mind. It doesn't matter what we do or where we do it, as long as I'm with you. Well, I guess I better take one last look at this place before it's gone forever. I think I might have an idea that might save this place. It's a bit of a long shot, but I think it might work. <laughs> That's fantastic. What's your idea? Let's get started. Huh? I'll tell you all about it. But first, breakfast. You know, studies show that it's the most important meal of the day. 
And from what I hear, breakfast is a pretty big deal between you and your friends. Oh, you could say that. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Well, we knew how important this was to you, so we came to give you some moral support. <gasps> guys, that's so sweet. Thank you. All right. Well, I made my case, and it looks like it worked. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I knew you could do it. Well, technically, I wasn't able to do anything special. Just slow things down to buy us some time. You did more than I could ever ask for. We got some serious dirt on C-Corp the other day. This is the perfect opportunity to put it to use. You guys are seriously so incredible. Thank you all so much. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but it sounds like cause for celebration, so drinks on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you for not giving up on me. You really do have a knack for getting people motivated. All I did was remind you of what was already there. That's it. The rest was all you. So, is this a good time to ask you out on a date? Trust me, your timing couldn't be any better. 